Will you go to heaven or hell? Are you sitting here right now on your way to hell? Listen, I say all the time, I'm scared of jail, but uh, I, I, I can make that. I can go to jail. I'm scared of hell. Because you see, hell, hell, hell is a different type of punishment. See, 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 when you go to jail, even though this guy was following Larry Hoover, even though I was doing all that in the name of being a gangster, even though he himself is in jail right now, he's doing 225 years in a Colorado State Penitentiary. He get a, he in a six by eight cell. He only gets out 20, he stays in 23 hours a day. He gets out one time, he plays basketball by himself. He gets no visitors. Everything he do, he gets maybe one. He has no connection with the outside world. But one thing he does have is a hope. One day, maybe when he's 90, they may have pardon on him and let him out, because he's 90. He may even have the laws changed, and a governor could come in and see him and give him clemency and tell him to go home, because he served all his time since 1973. See, there's a hope, but when you go to hell, not only is the fire, not only is the worms, not only are you going to burn and scream and cry, the only thing that makes it the worst is there is no hope. The Bible says that day and night torments forever and ever and ever. You will cry out and scream and say, Lord, have mercy. But he said, I gave you mercy. But you rejected it. What the devil had for you, you wanted. So now get your punishment. Is that sex you want? Get your punishment. That weed you want? Get your punishment. And there is no hope. God's word is final. You cannot overturn it. Who's higher than God to overturn it? Nobody can overturn it. You'll be there one million years from the day you get there. You'll be there. You'll scream. You'll cry, but you'll still be. It'll be like the day you got there. The pain doesn't let up. It doesn't go away. That's how agonizing hell would be. But listen, God, God knew this punishment was real. God knew that the punishment was going to be so terrible. The punishment was going to be so harsh. And he loved you. He really didn't want to give you that punishment. He loves you. Remember, he loves you. And he loved you so much. Do you know what he did for you? Yeah. So you wouldn't have to go to that place. Calvary. He sent his son. Yeah. He sent his son. Listen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It makes it worth it. He sent his son. But listen. Listen. He knew. He knew you was going there. And you're going there. He said, listen. I'm going to send my son. I love you, but I hate your sin. If this is it. If this was sin, he said, I love you, but I hate your sin. He let his son take it so you can go free. He allowed his son to be whipped, spit on, beat. He did everything he can to save you. He put all your times you had sex with your baby daddy. He put all the times you got drunk, you cussed, you disrespected everybody from your mother to your teacher. You did, you did everything. You've been, you've been, you've stolen something. You've lied. You've lusted. You've done all that wickedness, and you deserve hell. But he said, "I love you, and I'm gonna allow my son to take your punishment for you." Hallelujah. You put it on his son. Which one of us can give up our kids for people we don't know? We love our kids. That's just like that judge I told you. You standing there, you guilty of that crime. And the judge loves you. The judge is about to give you that 150 years. But the judge himself stands up, tells the bailiff to get ready. That sheriff walks over to put the handcuffs on the, on the prisoner. And the judge takes off his robe, takes it off, comes to behind the desk, and says, bailiff, take me to jail and stay. Let this one go free. his son to die for you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. His son died for you. Thank you. The Bible says, listen to me. 
how shall we escape? Listen, how shall we escape if you neglect a so great a salvation? How are you going to escape? What else can God do for you to satisfy? He let his son die for you. What else is left? What else is left? After a person dies for you, what else is left? If you neglect it. And I'm talking to you young people, and I'm talking to all young and old. If you sit there and you let a moment like this pass you, you're making a sad, yes, sad mistake. Yes. You, if you don't, and you walk out of here right now, as soon as we hit 72nd Street, and a shootout break out, accidentally a bullet hit you, and you die, you're guilty because you heard the truth. If you reject Jesus Christ right now, where is the hope? If you reject Jesus right now, he's coming to you. He's calling you. He's telling you, I am coming. He's coming back to this earth. But before Jesus even comes back, you could die. You could die. Don't you know the statistics show? I was doing it. You ever go home? Go home tonight. You can look at it yourself. It's, you know the free paper they give you on Sunday night streets called the red eye paper. That red eye paper. If you go online and look up that same website, that red eye paper website, they have a a section that says um, uh, uh, Chicago's homicides. Mm -hmm, yeah. And if you look at that Chicago homicide, it's going to show you everybody that gets killed. The people that's going to get killed this weekend, I'll see them in the morning. Mm. I'll go on that website and I can see all the people that die this weekend. I found one of my friends, my, one of my students, their father. He got killed and I was looking on that website and I said, I know him. I was able to go into my attendance book and call their house. I saw him dead on that website. Mm. If you leave out of here, and the statistics show they got it by age, they got it by neighborhood, I know how many people get killed around this church. Mm. I know how many people get killed in Roseland. I know how many people get killed in, in Chatham. I know how many people get killed on the west side. And do you not know that the statistics show that the ages that are getting killed the, no, the most is 15 to 30. Mm. But the thing is, if you reject Jesus Christ, now y'all, I don't know when you'll get a chance. Let us bow our heads. This is a very serious moment. Oh, Heavenly Father. God, you knew this day was going to come. You knew, Father God, that we've been fasting and praying for these young people. We've been this day is not just for young people, Father. It's for everybody that's here. Yes. You knew before the foundations of this world who would be here. But Father, I just pray, Lord God, that your spirit will begin to touch their hearts right now, God. Father God, let them see that they got to get right with you because if yes. they don't, yes. 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 the wages of sin is death. Yes. 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 Oh, Jesus, help them to see the reality of what you did on the cross. Let them acknowledge that have they lied before, they stole, they lusted, have they used your name in vain? Have they been disobedient? Have they put other things before God, the first commandment? They put other things like God before God. They'd rather get their hair done and wash their cars before they come and see your house. Oh, Jesus, forgive them. Oh, Lord. Now, I'm just going to ask you, if today is your day, you cannot consider the person sitting next to you. You can't think about what my friend going to say if I get up. It ain't about being cool. It's about being saved. If you know that God is speaking to you and you're a sinner and you know you need to be saved, today is your day. And you know that God is speaking to you. Listen to your conscience. Do you need to be saved? And if you know you need to be saved, I want you to stand up right now and come up here to this altar. Come on up here. Don't wait. Don't let. Don't wait. We just, we just we don't think about nothing. Nobody. Just get up and come. The decision is yours. The decision is yours. It's not about is my friend going to go up. Listen. Just come and let God deal with your heart. Get your life right with Jesus Christ. That's what God wants. Today is your day. If you sit there, if you sit there and let this day pass, it don't gotta be about young people. If you know that your life is not right with Jesus Christ, you need to come up here. You know you need to come and get right with Jesus. This thing is 
Series. <laughs>